All right, well, we're in our second part of our series on music. What type of music should a Christian be listening to? Um, I want to, uh, first of all, I want to read. Do you have that queued up? Do you have the, queued, the song queued up? Okay, uh, we're going to read the text, and then we're going to, uh, uh, I'm going to read it. If you'd like to flip to the text for me. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Let's read that together if we can. Ready? Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for today. And I pray, Lord, tonight we would just learn more about music. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to play a song tonight. Uh, I, I, I just listened to a little bit of it, but I think it's a good song. And uh, uh, Brother Freddie's going to play that for us. I like the songs that talk about my Savior, amen? And we have a wonderful Savior. Uh, Last week I uh, I talked about, um, I want to give you a short, actually I'll give you a short review of last week. Um, Did you know music originated in heaven? And did you know Lucifer, in other words Satan, was in charge of it all. He was called, Satan, Satan was called the angel of light in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. 
But Satan decided he wanted to get, he was too big for his britches, and God said, see ya, and kicked him out. There are three archangels in heaven. Each one was in charge of an activity in heaven. Gabriel was in charge of bringing messages from God to man. He was the archangel of words. Michael was the, arch, was the archangel in charge of leading the battles against the enemies of God. And he was the archangel of, the war, of wars. And Lucifer was the archangel in charge of worship around the throne of God, which included music, all the music in heaven. And when Lucifer was cast out, he took with him all the angels that had worked for him and under him in the areas of music. And that was about one-third of the angels in heaven were gone. Isaiah 14, verse 12 says that he was cast out of heaven and down to the ground. 2 Corinthians 4, 2 calls Lucifer or Satan the God or small g God of this world. He brought with him the power and influence that he had in heaven. And now he uses it for evil. In heaven, this war is in, was in the areas of praise and worship, which inclu included uh, uh, music, and it still is the war today. You go to a lot of churches and they have drums set up and they have bass, uh, they have a rock concert before church service. You listen to Christian rock and, and oh, many of these artists, they go out on stage drunker than a skunk. They're tattooed, long-haired hippies singing rock music with the word Lord in it. Does that make it Christian? It doesn't. As I said last week, you're either going to agree or disagree with me. I'm going to make another statement tonight. You're either going to love it or hate it. But the stand that this preacher is preaching and this preacher takes on music is a godly one. I talked last week about, about the TV shows we watch and the music that's on the TV shows. I like the TV show Duck Dynasty and they play a ZZ Top song at the start of it. I started muting it. I started muting it. We learned last week that Satan is still attacking in this world and the Christian realm and, and Christians and churches today. And by the way, I think in a lot of churches he's winning. I think in a lot of Christians he's winning. You know, we on our cell phones have rock music ringtones. Folks, by the way, you can delete them. I know several, some of you have iPhones and some have Blackberries and some have other things. The Windows phones. You can delete them. You don't need to put them in there. I said to hear some areas where uh, uh, I gave you some points or areas where, uh, where I believe Satan is attacking. I said, number one, the first thing Satan attacks in, in, in the music is message. If the message is not clear or it's blatantly wrong, the hearers will often and will 99.9% .9 of the time do wrong. What was the message of that song that we just played? Jesus never fails. Oh, that's such a bad, bad message. No, it's not. It's a good message. Uh, no, actually, I, I'm going to correct myself. It's not a good message. It's a great message. Amen. It's a message out of this world. You know, oftentimes, by the way, humans are always bent towards sin. We're made of the flesh. You know, when we get saved, we don't cease to become a sinner. For the wages of sin is death. And for how many of us sinned? All. We are all sinners. And we are bent towards sin. Satan's purpose remains the same today. 
His purpose, and he does it through mainly, I believe, 90% of the time through music, he changes the truth of God into a lie. And Christians listen to it. I heard a song one time, and, and it, it, it mentioned Jesus. It mentioned God. It mentioned the Holy Spirit. And then it mentioned what that, that singer thinks of all three of them. And that's not good. By the way, that singer they found in a hotel in Toronto several years ago with needles, needles, more than one, sticking out of his arm, dead from a drug overdose. You reap what you sow. The next thing I said last week, he attacks the men who write the music. If a man, if a man or woman would, uh, with a loose or no morals can sing the songs of God, then that, the, uh, that, the, then that lifestyle must be okay. You know, those young ladies that sang that song, if you looked at their lifestyle, you, you probably, well, you know the lifestyle that the Highland, the jo Joyful Melody sing. These, are the, these girls are the cream of the crop at Hiles Anderson College. I'm not, that's a shameless plug for Hiles Anderson College, but that's okay. Hiles Anderson College is a good college. So if you want to take, go to Hiles, if you want to take your kids to a good Bible college, go to Hiles Anderson College. Anyway, it's just a good plug. If they sing the songs and they dress inappropriately and they have a beer in their hand and they sing those songs and that lifestyle, people will equate, oh, that song, that lifestyle, oh, it's okay to do that. There are many performers today who claim, no, claim to have no moral stand or even biblical conviction in their lives. Many are beer guzzling, dirty joke telling, bar hopping, cussing, uh, uh, nude beach going, pro-abortion, so-called Christians, and, but they sing about Jesus. And my dear friends, that's so far from Christ. The, so, they're not Christians if they sing. It's, it's, it's how we are. We are saved to come out of that, not to go into that. By the way, I'm one that's speaking. When I got the conviction against rock music and Christian rock music, I burned $5,000 worth of CDs. We had a good bonfire in my preacher's uh, fireplace, man. It was, and, man, they made pretty colors. You ever try to burn a CD? Beautiful colors, man. It's orange and blue and, man, it's green. Man, it's cool. Anyways, let me get on the thing or I'm never going to get finished. Not only is the message muddled mess, but so many musicians who sing the songs are the same way. I was in a Christian bookstore, the Christian bookstore in the city here, and I was flipping through the posters a couple years ago because I wanted to get some posters for the kids who won our, 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 our program, our spring program. And I saw this group, and, and they had long, they had uh, arms were all tattooed, and they were muscle shirts and long-haired, and they were going like this. And I said, I said to the lady in the store, I said, man, I, I said, I did not know you sold rock music posters. And she said, they're a Christian music. And I said, really? They sure don't look Christian. That poster was gone, and their so were their CDs. Gone. Gone. You know, we put that garbage in our mind. What's the difference of rock music and pornography? They're both bad. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Thank you. All right, good. You're awake tonight. I said number three. Lastly, Satan attacks the music himself, themselves, or itself. Joshua mentions music in this passage in, in Exodus 32, and, and it says, uh, some music sounds, it, it says here, uh, when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, it's, he said unto Moses, their noise, there is a noise of war in the camp. Do you realize a lot of this, and, 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 and especially Christian rock, sounds like war? 
You know, ho, 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 you know, and it's like, oh my dear soul. You know, you ever, you ever listen, I, I gone into Future Shop or gone into Best Buy or gone into PetSmart or wherever else, and you hear the most ungodly music. But it's all right if they say, oh, Jesus never fails. No, it's not in a rock music beat. There's a one message, and I'm going to add to the end. I'm going to borrow Brother Hiles' message on rock music. You ever heard that, sister? Woo, knock your socks off. Man, it'll make you, if you have rock music in your home, and if you, the Holy Spirit gets on your heart, man, you'll bring, bring in your rock music that, the next Sunday and throw it at the altar. Say, I don't want this preacher. Get rid of it. I'll do it. See, if it sounds godly, it, your music will either sound godly or like a ballroom, barroom nightclub. It'll sound either moral or immoral. There's no neutral. All music is made up of three elements, melody, harmony, and rhythm. Godly music has them in order properly, while ungodly music has them in a corrupt order. Satan is one who corrupts the, that order, and believe me, he knows how to do it better than anybody else. Remember, he was in charge of the music where? In heaven. Godly music has melody before harmony and both of these before rhythm. Ungodly music puts them in the other order. Tonight I wanted to teach you how to determine if some Christian music is right or wrong. Now I'm, I'm going to say something and you might not agree with me. And, and again, I don't care. I really don't. And I don't mean that cold and callous. Not all Christian music is good. It's not. Christian rock, bad. Christian rap, bad. Christian hip hop, they're starting to do that now. You know, pants down to here, that need to, looks like they need to change their diaper. Hat on sideways, yo, yo, you know. Oh, can you imagine me? Irene, can you imagine me coming to church from the pants down to here? How you doing? Yeah, God bless you. Woo! And we think that's stupid and funny, but oh, well, let's put it in the CD player. That's okay. Isn't that hypocritical? Pharisaical? Isn't that wrong? I was, uh, I, I was at a, 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 a place the other day. <laughs> I'm not going to say where it was because these people listen to my sermons. Um, I was at a place the other day, and I could hear over the, 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 a common area of the place of business so-called Christian music. And they had a... The, it sounded like the old song Highway to, or Stairway to Hell or Highway to Hell. It had the same beat, same music, same, just different words. And I'm like, wow. I used to listen to that song when it was... By the way, music will stay with you forever. There'll be times when I'm in a, in, in a shop... I was in that future shop on Friday night buying my Keurig. Yes. And uh, God bless Keurig. Love it. And uh, it's awesome, man. <laughs> I, you told me you'd lo I'd love it. But anyway, let me get, get back to the message. And uh, this song, come on, that I used, it was my drink, old drinking song. I started drinking with that song. And, well, I, st I had to get out. Let me just write that down. All right. How do you know? Good godly music has certain biblical characteristics. If it's godly music, it must have biblical characteristics. Amen? How many of you agree with me that? Give me a hearty amen. Yeah. Amen. How would you answer the 10 questions I'm going to go over tonight to determine if the Christ, if, how, how you answer them will determine whether it is godly or not. 
Again, not all Christian music is godly. How many people like that one song that we, we just played at the start? How many people think that was godly? Amen. It was beautiful. Okay, but you had a, you know, a rap beat to it. You could easily make that into a rap song. I heard somebody, I heard a rapper rap Amazing Grace. And it was an ungodly song. Words are awesome. The word, the, 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 the beat was ungodly. So let me, let me give you a first, first question, a first answer, first question of the 10 questions. That's not it. Is it, is its message scriptural? Can you blow that up a little bit bigger so everybody can see that there, sure? No, don't worry about it. Is its message scripture, scriptural? Uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says, But the, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Good Christian music must present a message that is true to the word of God and doctrinally sound. It's got to be true. By the way, if it's true to the word of God, it will be doctrinally sound. Now, which doctrine? Your doctrine or God's doctrine? See, because there's so many religions out there. We have our own doctrines. We have our own beliefs. We, well, you know, it's all right if you, you know. It's all right if guys come to church wearing a dress. No, it's not. It's not. It's all, it's all right if we, we uh, hug and kiss and neck and pet before marriage. No, it's not. See, a lot of the Christian music nowadays, the newfound Christian music, it be, has become so sensual, so sexy, so to speak. It's become hip and now. You know, you can't do wrong by singing the old-fashioned hymns. I think, you know, one of the reasons why I think God has not done some miraculous work is because our music is so ungodly. Music prepares you for everything you do for God. You know, I liked, I liked, I liked uh, Sarah's video. But you know what? I, I didn't listen to a lot of the words. No offense, sister. I listened to music in the background because the words don't stir my heart so much as the music did in the background. Now, the music, the words stirred my heart. We've seen five churches started and, Several people being saved and, and, and the word being translated in the command language. and that, But the music really stirs my heart. I like the old-fashioned hymns. I like the old... You know why a lot of the residents love coming to our church services? Because of the old-fashioned hymns. The old-fashioned singing. The old way of doing things. Doesn't the Bible say, I am the Lord thy God? I change sometimes. I change. I go with the flow. No, he doesn't say that. He says, I'm the Lord thy God. I change not. He don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, God doesn't just hang with his homies and go with the flow. He's old-fashioned. Number two. We got number two? Ah, there we go. Does it lead us to think in a biblical manner? And I'm going to add, or does it make our mind wander into perversion and sin? Does it make our mind wander? Um, there was a song a couple years ago um, <laughs> at a big, huge meeting. And Sarah, Sarah Glover, would, would, I, I think you probably know the meeting I'm talking about. Big youth rally. And the preacher played the song, and it was sensual. The words were beautiful. The words are actually in a hymn we sing, but it was sensual. It did not lead anybody. It, it didn't lead anybody to think in a biblical manner. Actually, it made me angry. It made me angry. 
I listened to it once through because I wanted to see where this preacher was going. And this preacher wasn't going the right way. Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brethren, moreover, thing, the things that, uh, sorry, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of, are of good rapport. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. The text and music should not be cheap. We cheapen God's message. You know, I love doing the chapels for nursing homes, but I hate being non-denominational. I, I, I don't. I, I don't. Now, I don't preach a Baptist message, but I preach on, man, I preach the book, period. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. By the way, this ain't a non-denominational service. This is a Baptist service. I'm glad the lady was. Well, I'm thinking as I'm, I'm down, I, going down, I'm thinking, is that, is that lady here that <laughs> every time I pound the pulpit, she, oh! <laughs> hold on, let me do that. Ready? There you go. Um, and she said, amen. But biblical, it doesn't make, does it stir you to go out and tell somebody about Christ or does it stir you to go out and do something else? What does it stir you to do? Hey, you know what? That song, we, man, I want to go out and, man, I was, I was rare. I was, I couldn't wait till it ended. I wanted to preach, man. It was getting me fired up. Number three. By the way, before I do number three, go back to number two. By the way, if you go down the wrong road, oftentimes you can't get back. And if you do get back, there'll be scars. There will be damage, there will be hurts, there will be wounds, and it will be a ruined testimony. And people won't take you seriously. <gasps> Saying. Number three, does it help us to honor God with our bodies? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6, verse 19 and 20. I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses. It starts off, what? Seriously, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. See, you're not yours. You don't belong to you. You have no right saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what I want. Nobody can tell me what to do. Really? God just may put you into a place where you have to do it. And by the way, I've, I've gotten a spanking from God and it hurts. I got foolish and I decided, well, I wasn't really. See, music that leads us to or tends to uh, intimate, make our, our, our body do something different than what God wants it intended to will destroy us or it will impair us to do God's work. It will. You know, I used to, um, I used to belong to a church where we used to have valet. It was in inner city. It was downtown Toronto and the beaches are, we used to have valet cars back and forth. They, their parking was horrible. There was maybe five parking spots and we had a whole pile of people coming and I was one of the valets. And little did they know, we always turned it on, not all the time, but oftentimes we turned their, their, their radio station on, their stereo on. We wanted to see what, and by the way, we were told to, we were instructed to by our pastor. We turned the music, turned the thing on, and man, I'll tell you something. Some of the deacons listen to some of the most ungodly music, brother. I'm sitting there, it's like, do you remember when we were at college, we had to hand in all our tapes and all our music? They still got to do that, by the way. And you got this little sticker. My roommate one time didn't get, he didn't get his music back. My roommate's 
wish I didn't get one of the music back. It was Scotland the Brave. And I woke up to that every morning at five o'clock. They wish that I didn't get that back. But anyways, uh, some of the music didn't come back because it didn't meet biblical standards. Hey, if God went in and checked your CD cabinet, would, or, or, your, uh, or for those who are a little older, your eight tracks or, or vinyl, Freddie, your, your eight tracks, you know, joking. your MP3 iPod or whatever that's in your car or, or in your computer or wherever, in the secret areas of your life. By the way, God sees them. Would he approve of them? Would he approve of the music? Does it honor God? Does it help us to honor God with our bodies? By the way, honoring God with your body is coming to church. Honoring your God with your body is going to the mission field. Honoring God with your body is telling others about Christ. Preaching. Uh, by the way, honoring God with your body is also working hard at your job. Number four. I'm, gonna, I'm going quickly through some of these tonight. Does it maintain a balance between spirit and understanding? 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with understanding also. See, music that is primary emotionally fraught will not fulfill this requirement. When Christians do things on emotion, it's wrong. You know, that's why, I, that's why summer camps. Uh, did you, have you ever been to camp? Yes. Uh, camps. There's like good, good camp. You know, all these, have you ever been to a summer camp? And you know, all these kids, they, oh, yeah, I'm going to surrender to be a missionary. I'm going to surrender to read my Bible three times a year. I'm going to surrender to this. I'm going to surrender to that. And rah, rah, sis, we ball, And then two weeks later, you know what they do? Nothing. They do nothing. Hey, revival means. Well, God bless. I went to a revival meeting, and God told me to tithe 70% of my money, but I can't afford it to, so I'm not going to. You know, if we do things by emotion, it never lasts. If we do things by the spirit and then emotion comes in, then it lasts. You know, uh, 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 can I see one of those cards? I, I gave one out of the way. See, spirit is for going. Emotion is this. You know, we, we, we heard her talk about it and she got all choked up this, tonight uh, about little Peter. See, spirit will give you the right emotion. Emotion will oftentimes lead you to the wrong spirit. You ever seen a drunk person? And they do stupid stuff, don't they? I remember I was... I used to work. I used to work the evening shift. I used to come drive downtown Brantford. <laughs> and drive by a bar and one time this guy he's walking down the street and he's drunk and he looks at this girl walking by and he walks right into a sign and he was tall enough you know the sign the, yeah, he was tall enough his head <laughs> dinged the sign you ever heard somebody's head ding the sign folks it's funny and nothing's here. I was at the light and I saw it, man. It was. I'm going, dear Lord, please have the light long, stay long red. Because, man, I was just laughing. He was filled with the wrong spirit and he got stupid. And when we're filled with the wrong spirit, we're stupid. We become very dangerous. See, and by the way, when he hit that sign, he cut his forehead wide open. He went like this. And his buddies are like, dude, you're like, hey, you got me. And it was funny. It was a summer day. I was laughing. I seriously was. I'm going, dear Lord, have them not look over here because I'm almost paying myself laughing. It was funny. But does it maintain a balance between spirit and understanding? 
Does the music you listen to, does it, does it make you want to go instead of work? That song we listen to, man, I want to go out and work. He leadeth me. I love you, Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Man, there's, no, there's nothing like those old-fashioned hymns that make you want to work. Number five. Does it contain the words that are worthy of worship of a holy God? Is it worthy of God's name being in it? Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 6. Uh, turn there with, if, you, if you wouldn't mind. If you have a Bible, if you don't, then just follow along as I read. Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 6. It says, In the year that King Uzzah died, I saw also the, the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. And his train fell, uh, fill, sorry, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the uh, seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. One cried to another, saying, "Holy, or sorry, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The, earth, the whole earth is full of his glory." And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I, I will dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. The flew, uh, the, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from, uh, with the tongs from off the altar. You know, when we start singing the old rock music that we used to listen to before we got right with God, our lips are unclean. Our lips are unclean. And you know what? God can't touch us. God can't use us. You know, the, the, the Bible talks about the, 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 that uh, blessings and cursing come out of our mouth and it not not so to be. Well, you know what? When our mouth is dirty, God can't, God, it, it, it not ought so to be. Amen? There's nothing like good old-fashioned hymns. There's nothing like good. Now, that song we, 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 we listened to, it wasn't an old-fashioned hymn, but it had good music. It had good beat. It had, by the way, it doesn't make you want to wiggle. It made me want to get going. How many people may want to get going in here? Amen. Give me an amen. Amen. Get going. See, is it worth God's name being in it? How much do we, how much, is God worthy of our worship? Okay, we had two people say amen. Is God worthy of our worship? Amen. He is. But is the music we listen to? The, the song that was on your, CD, on your presentation had no words to it. It had, but you, I knew the words. I mean, I was singing them in my heart. Man, I'm like, yeah, that's a good song. It didn't want to, and by the way, it was... It didn't want, want to make me wiggle. And wanted to, it made me want to worship God. You know, I don't believe in Sunday morning or Sunday night worship services. I don't call, we've never called them. We will never call them worship services, ever. You know what we call them? Church service, because worship should be done before you come to the doors. Mm -hmm. Worship is preparing your heart for the message. What you, would you listen to this afternoon? Some rock rap music out of the pit of hell? Or did you listen to some good old fashioned music? Hey, how's your worship time with the Lord? See, I, I spend worship 
time with God, listening to music. That's part of my worship, by the way. There, I played last week a song that I listen to every day. Every day. Man, it gets me all happy. It makes me happy. It does. Well, what's, what's your worship time like? Well, I don't have one. That's probably why you're not doing much for God. Do you hear the pin drop, Miss Sarah? I can say that because she's not a member of our church. She can say amen. Or, well, she won't say amen to you. Ted might get all upset and stop supporting her. I'll support you, Sarah. <clears throat> How's your music? Number six. Is it free of association with worldly music styles? In other words, does it sound like the world's music? Let the peace of God rule in your heart. In your heart. Oh, sorry. No, that's the next verse. I love not the world. First John 5, or sorry. First John 2, 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Music that seeks to copy the world is not God honoring. It's not. You can put I'm thinking of uh, Tim Hawkins, funny comedian. His, his music is not good. It's not. Funny comedian. His words are funny, but it's not God-honoring. Number, se number seven, does it express the peace that accompanies the Christian life? Uh, Colossians 3, 15 and 16 says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. That, uh, sorry, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Does the music you listen to get you mad or does it get you pumped for the Lord? I'm say pumped. Well, okay. Does it get you on fire for God? Does the music want you, make you want to fight? Or does it make you want to praise God? Does the music want make you want to go out and do something ungodly? Or does your music make you get excited to go do something for Him? I have one song that I listen to before I go soul winning. Nobody, every, every time. Nobody knows what it is. You'll never know. My wife, we've been married 15 years, and she still doesn't know what it is, and she'll never know what it is. It's the same song every time. It gets me so excited to go out and, uh, go out and, and, and win souls. And then I sing one song before, before I go out because I want to make sure I'm, I, I love the Lord that much, and I want to make sure he knows that I love him that much, and it's I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ears. I love that song. That's my favorite chorus. I could sing that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and not get tired of it. I'd be tired singing, be staying up all the time, but not get tired of singing it. Does it express the peace that accompanies the Christian life? See, God doesn't want you to be fussing and fighting and fretting and nervous and I'm so nervous for things. Man, we had our microphone all hinkied up. Well, okay, it's, is it working? It picked me up? All right, good. We're okay. We had to cross the way this morning. We got this. We got that. You know, we had a lady that kept on standing up in, in her wheelchair, and the alarm kept on going off. Well, we fixed that. Who cares? You know what? You're dealing with people. You're going to have a whole bunch of idiosyncrasies. Nobody's going to agree with you all the time. Can I, can I be very honest with you all? I don't agree with me all the time. Seriously. I do some things after I'm going, yeah, you such an idiot for doing that. You need smacked upside the head and I'll smack. Right upside my own head. Probably why I have a headache sometimes. 
keep doing it because I'm dumb. But anyways, uh, what did I say? Does it express the peace that accompanies the Christian life? Again, God wants you to live in peace. Love, joy, what? Peace. Not this. Peace. Peace isn't, hey, everything's okay. Everything's all right in my Father's house. Really? Hey, you know, we don't live in heaven, but we can have a heavenly atmosphere in our, in our homes and in our life. I, I was talking to a resident uh, at another nursing home, and there, all the time, this lady was awake. She goes, nurse! Nurse! And I, mean, I don't know how she <laughs> hurt my throat. I said to the, <coughs> excuse me, I said to the lady, I said, doesn't that bother you? She said, no, nah, peace of God passes all understanding. I'm okay with that. I don't hear it. I'm used to it because I, I sing, I love you, Lord. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I would drive me up the wall. But anyways, number nine, number eight, what are we at? Number eight, there we go. I got three more. Hold on with me. We're, as I told you, it'll be a few minutes longer. It, is it characterized by music? What? Read those next two words. It, let's read this together. Ready? Is it characterized by musical preciseness and order? See, the Bible says we're supposed to have everything done decently and in what, gentlemen? In order. Is the music proper? Is it in order? Is it precise? See, the Bible says... And 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But sister here, she, she said a, a verse in, in, in command language. That's not the unknown tongue. Okay? The unknown tongue is like something nobody understands. Now, she understood what she was saying. Hundreds of people, thousands of people where she is. But by the way, the unknown tongue also is something that God doesn't know, understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? God doesn't understand everything we say. Because some of the things we say is really dumb. <laughs> Amen? We're really dumb. Why does God call Christians sheep? Because sheep are dumb. You know, the, 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 unknown, the unknown tongue edifieth himself. In other words, you know, if we, if we build up ourselves and we start wagging about, you know, something other than... God, it's wrong. You know, I love our church. I, I, I pastor the greatest church in the world, and it's not because I'm the pastor, it's because of the people in it. And by the way, it's because of the message we preach. We preach from the old black book. I can say that. I used, I used to say that, and I, I, my, my, my Bible is maroon. It's like the old black book. Wait a minute, the old maroon book. Uh, the old black book. We preach out of the old book. Does it promote, does it characterize, uh, sorry, is it characterized by musical preciseness and order? In other words, is it in the right order? Remember, it has to be in the right order. Number nine, let's go next. Does it promote a lifestyle of godliness, modesty, and holiness? Or, and I didn't, it's not there, or does it promote sin, sensuality? Does it? Does it make you want to go, huh? You know, these. Uh, there's a new group called uh, coming out. Uh, well, I'll give you the verse and then I'll talk, talk thing. It says, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. You know, these, 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 all these artists out, there's a new group coming out every week, and, and they're all, you know, you don't get modest dressed ladies singing and selling platinum records. You never do. You never will see a modest dressed woman uh, or man or modest song sung by a man or a woman or holy song, songs, CDs uh, sung by men or women of God that love the Lord and that are modest and, and, and godly and holy and set apart for God. You'll never see them on the number one charts. Why? Why? Because 
people just don't want God in their music. And you know what? A sad thing to say, a lot of Christians don't want God in their music. I, I was talking to one pastor, and he said, are you sure you want to preach on music? You'll split your church. I said, good. Good, I'll split the church. Because music prepares you for everything you are going to do in a day. What's the, when you're in the army, what's the first thing you hear? And you want to go, <coughs> shoot the bugler. That prepares you for your day. Have you ever gone to church and some ungodly music come in to your car? Maybe you had a, a set on your music station on your radio or you had some ungodly music and you just, man, you're all ready to go to church and then some ungodly music popped in or maybe you're in a store or whatever and boom, you were not in the spirit to go to church. Has that, ever ha Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to me. I was in Sarah's car and I listened to her music. Not Sarah, you. No, joking. Joking. Does it promote a godly lifestyle? Number 10, I'm almost done. Does it contribute to temptation of new or weak believers? In other words, does it cause them to stumble? See, I like this verse, uh, uh, Roman, these verses, Romans chapter 14, verse 13 um, and 21, and Romans 5, sorry, 15, 2 says, Let us therefore not judge one another anymore, but judge, rather, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. First, uh, Romans uh, 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 14, 21, uh, it is good either, neither to eat flesh nor drink wine or anything thereby that thy brother stumbleth or is offended or made weak. Hey, Romans 15, 2, let, but let everyone of us please his neighbor for his good, for, for his good to edifica edification. There are Christians that are brand new there in this room. There are Christians that are weak in this room. There are Christians that, but that are of all strength, age, and everything else in this room tonight. And you ought not to cause any of them to stumble in any area. Why does the pastor go shake everybody's hand? Daryl, why? To encourage people. What else? Sarah? Nobody gets offended. It's the biggest thing. Nobody gets offended. See, because if I, let's say I, 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 let's say I don't shake this lovely young lady. I shake her hand and I shake this young lady's hand and I shake this young man's hand and I don't shake that young lady's hand. She might She would have been. But you, whose fault's that? Mine. God tells me I shouldn't put a stumbling block. Hey, so if I have, um, let's say, let's say, uh, uh, um, well, what, by the way, uh, you can also cause an older Christian to stumble too. Rock music can call, cause an older Christian to stumble too. Seriously. Especially those like myself and and I and I believe probably Sarah and 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 my wife. We listened to rock music. It was okay. Did you ever listen to rock music, Sarah? No. But it was okay. And we go into a store and boom. We got to get out of the store. We got to get out of the store real quick. 
don't cause anybody to stumble. Music that reminds a newly saved convert of their old life of sin is to be rejected and stayed away from. Don't listen to it. Get out of it. Don't listen. Don't listen. Don't play it. Don't have it in your house. Don't have it in your car. Don't have it in your MP3 or iPod or whatever you want to call it. Or your iPad. Computer. Whatever. Even your cell phone. These ten questions I'm all concluding up are not the end all to know how to evaluate music, but it's a good start. We have to start someplace. Folks, it is t- we're coming near the end. I think, I think the Lord could come back even tonight. Who knows? You look at the, what's going on in the news, you study the book of Revelation, and, and, and oh, oh, Lord, he's coming back real quick. We, that means, uh, does that mean we're supposed to put our feet up and say, well, I've done my job, ah, doing nothing more? No, that means we got to get busier and busier and busier and busier and busier and busier. Get going for God. It is time to get serious for the things of God. Why do you think I'm preaching on music tonight? Hey, I just finished a series, finished a series on marks of maturity. And again, there's too many Christians wearing diapers that shouldn't be wearing spiritual diapers. I said last week, the erosion of musical standards among the contemporary Christian parallel the erosion and con, uh, convictions and pra- of their practice and their faith and their Bible, uh, Bible biblical stands as well. It denotes a spirit of compromise with the world and must be vigorously and opposed by strong Christian leaders. I am opposing the wrong music. I take a stand tonight. I'm standing tonight. And I'm saying ungodly music needs to be put away. We need to start praying these, these people out of the business. We need to start praying these ungodly singers to get saved. Um, I forget the, I forget the um, some of you might know who he is. He, was a, he, he sang um, music. Oh. I'm thinking it was ACDC or something like that. And he got saved. And he said he was asked on a Christian radio station on a Christian on a Christian uh, in, uh, an interview. He said, "What is your biggest disappointment in life?" He said, "All the years of Satan." Who? Alice Cooper got saved. He said. He said. He said. The, the, the person interviewing me said, what is the biggest disappointment of your life? He says, all the years I sang the satanic mu- music and it's still being listened and piped into, their, into, their, into the people's ears today. He said, I wish nobody would ever buy another one or play another one of my records because they're of the devil. And if he can say that, by the way, he made millions upon millions upon millions almost billions of dollars on his music. I'm taking a stand tonight. Again, as the areas of our lives of believers we should, we should uh, ever follow, we need to follow this music. Of, listen to the right music. I'm taking a stand tonight. I'm taking a stand tonight against ungodly music. How about you? You're going to take a stand? I, I'm talking going home and sorting out your music things. I like, I, I like Abby. She plays, some, she plays some video games that have some music. and She finds out how to turn them down real quick. And she can't turn them down. She mutes the TV. That's right. I'm taking a stand tonight. How about you? Is it, is it worth it? See, next week I want to t- teach you how, how, how music and its rhythm can affect us for good or bad. But before that, I want you, I, I'm going to ask you a question tonight. You going to stand? You going to say, you know what? I got to get some of this stuff out of my house. I need it gone. I need to clean house. I need to clean my music section. I need to clean my, I just need to clean it up and get it gone. You say, preacher, 
I, I'll be at some money. I wasted my money. And I'll say, you know what? You're right, you did. But tonight, what, what would you rather do? Waste your money or waste your soul? Waste your power for God. I said you'd either love it or hate it. Agree or disagree. But you know what? I think the message tonight was very biblical. I think it was very truthful. Every head bowed, eyes closed.